So, yeah, so we think A is greater than zero since the y-intercept is greater than zero. That would be like right there. Nice. Okay. Let's see the second part here. What about B? We think B is negative? Why do you think B is negative? Hold on, hold on. One at a time. One at a time. <laughs> Who was talking? What? Hmm? Oh, see, so, so you're doing like an algebraic analysis on this? I like that. So we think B is less than zero. Let's just go with guess here. What do you think C is? Why? No. Okay, so here's the thing. You see that function right there? If that's the function, can someone tell me? I'll, I'll do it in green because I haven't used that. What's P, What's the first derivative equal to? B plus, just do the derivative for me. 2CX, do you agree? So what is P2 prime at zero is equal to what? B, plug in zero for X, it's B, right? But here's the thing, that this, it's the slope of this line right there. Is that positive or negative? Negative, so B is going to be negative, at least this is what I think so. So then what's P double prime of X? It's, what's the what's the derivative? We did this yes, two c exactly right two c. But what do we know about this? This thing is concave down, so therefore two c has to be less than zero. So c needs to be c needs to be negative. So yes, you can use algebra two to do this. Absolutely, absolutely. Does that make sense? Ish. Let's see if we're remotely in agreement with the graduates. The idea is you have to do the derivatives and be real careful, right? First derivative, second derivative, third, and then you do that fourth derivative, and a lot of stuff cancels. A lot of stuff cancels. The end of f, uh, the fourth derivative of f at zero is zero. So then you have zero one zero two zero zero one zero negative two zero. See those five numbers? You see where they correlate right there? And then what happens? <laughs> zeros are gone. Zeros are gone. Oh, you're left with that. A lot of things collapse. What's the most annoying part of this question? It's just going to happen, everybody. The most annoying part of this question is the derivatives. It's, so it's, it, just it just takes time. Okay. And this is where you hope things cancel or get all cyclical, like, you know, like cosine or sine. It doesn't always. It doesn't always. Yay. So what? actually, I would say the key, the entire key to this is remembering all the derivatives of inverse trig functions, which I told you you need to know, which you, you, you should. You should know. Okay, definition of a Taylor polynomial. The key is, how many terms do you see right there? Nope, not an infinite. N terms, finite. Doesn't, what's not at the end of that? Dot, 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 it don't keep going, it stops. A Taylor polynomial stops somewhere, right? Stops somewhere, but you saw this before. And this is the Taylor polynomial near what? Centered around zero. zero. You like zero, makes things nice, generally speaking. Generally speaking. So yesterday we did this. Do you remember that? We constructed the Taylor polynomial 1 over 1 minus x, and that was really nice. It was what? 1 plus x plus x squared. Geometric series, ratio being x. Ratio has to be less than 1. Absolute value has to be less than 1 to converge. So this only converged when x was between negative 1 and 1. Just recapping what we did yesterday. What's the thing that got added on here? What's the only difference? x near a, near a, right? So it's x minus a, x minus a, not at 0. Exciting, exciting. And then we did this one. Construct the Taylor polynomial of degree 4 around um, of ln x near 1. Why did we do it near 1 and not 0? Do you remember? Yeah, 0 is not in the domain of ln, right? So you can't tack the estimation onto a part of the plane that it doesn't actually work with. Okay, so what about cosine? We talked about sine before. Here's, here's cosine of x. Yeah, here are the partials. <laughs> So you need to remember there are three basic Taylor polynomials that you need to remember. Cosine, sine, and e to the x. You have to memorize those. What about the one over one minus And one over one minus x is another key one. But if, if there was just three, if there was just three, the three most important are sine, cosine, and e to the x. Also, one over one minus x is key. But you see little smiley faces? You need those things. You need those things. Do what you need to do, but you have to memorize those. I will ask you. 
I will ask you for the general formula, things like that. You need to know what those are. You need to know what those are. You need to know what those are. This was the Taylor series around zero, which was really exciting. And this is just a recap of what you've seen before. Taylor series of fx about x equals, oh, it's the same thing. What's the only difference now? It's not a Taylor polynomial anymore. It's called a Taylor series. What's the only difference now? The, it goes off infinitely. What's at the end of those lines? Dot, dot, dot. So only difference between polynomial and series is one goes on forever. One is very big, but it is finite. One is finite. OK, so. It says, construct the Taylor polynomial of degree 4 approximating the function ln x. We did that one already. And when you graph the partials, do you remember the graph we looked at that looked like this? It was like the first thing we looked at. It's, it, showed the, it visually showed the interval of convergence outside of that range. It went berserk, so it's not going to converge. But inside that range, it would converge. It's kind of nice. So let's try this one right here. Right here. Um, yeah, that one right there. Find the Taylor series for ln 1 plus x about x equals 0 and calculate the interval of convergence. Try that for me right now. Find the board, everybody. Go up to the board. Let's do that. Let's do it at the board. Do you mind if I clean up this? You can clean that board up, yes. Go right ahead. You can work with partners. Go right ahead. Make it easier to see. About x. So find the t you have to find the Taylor series and then calculate the interval of convergence. Finish writing. You need everything. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Guys, share nicely. There you go. Remember, everybody, you're finding the interval of convergence. So to find the interval of convergence, you need the what? Uh, Not done yet. Nice. Good job. Now, what's the exactly? You have to write the general term. Yeah. So, what is the general term? Yeah, just figure that out. Oh, yeah. 
I would highly recommend not simplifying, but that's just me. Oh. Find the general. So basically, an n factorial at the bottom. Let's let's get the numbers out. Cool. Write the general term, everybody. N factorial at the bottom. Up top. We have x to the power and we have the general term. X to the y. Is every chain inside? Oh, we're changing. That's what I wanted to do. I guess we can just get rid of this. Well, now we're able to do that. If that can be correct. And then let's just go to the end. To the end. The ln of 1 is 1. Is it? Maybe it does cancel. Maybe it's one. One is one, right? I can't remember all numbers. No, it's a line up. Is it? Okay. Ln of one is one. Okay. Ln of one. Yeah. Okay. 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 It's it's something. I I four is not four. Ah. Ah. Where is your general term? Let me see. Where is it? Where's the general term? No, that's the question. Oh, it's the general term. X to the n over n. Is it x to the n over n? <laughs> Doesn't it switch sign back and forth? Oh, true. Yes. We did not account for that. Times negative one. No. Well, yeah, maybe for that, but then we have And it's centered oh. around what, everybody? It's centered around yeah. what? Zero, yeah, okay. It's the. So I just don't know. So we get Oh good. Maybe. What about the numerator? I forgot a number up there. There's a two and a six. Oh. Oh yeah. Nice. Oh, close. That was so close. Zero one. What's the interval of convergence? What'd you get? Close, but you're centered around. Uh, yes, if it's centered around. From negative one to one. Hmm. What'd you get for your series? Let me see. What'd you get? Read it. Say it out loud again, Sima. Perfect. Nice. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Nice. Good job. You're right. Yeah. What did you get? Yep. I think we should bring back our partner quizzes <laughs> from geometry. Yeah. Sit down, everybody. Sit down. Sit. So I think you guys figured this out. You did ln 1 plus x, and it ended up being, I think, x minus x squared over 2. Oh, it's positive. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> plus x cubed over what? 3 uh, minus x to the 4th over what? 4. 
So you, you can either simplify or you don't have to. It's really nice if you, you have to be really careful about it because it's not just n minus 1, it's n minus 1 factorial right there. You see the n minus 1 in the numerator? So the general term here, what was the general term? It's n equals 0 to infinity of what? Negative 1 to the n plus 1, right? n minus 1 factorial x to the n all over. And yes, you can cancel. You can cancel here because what is n minus 1 factorial? That's just n in the denominator. This does cancel. You can do that. And this turns into just n like that. And then you have to run the ratio test. You run the ratio test and then you end up with the interval of convergence being between 1 and negative 1. Absolutely. So it is kind of challenging though because what did you have to do? You had to do derivatives carefully. You had to plug numbers in carefully. So there is... Another function I'd like to add to the Taylor series, uh, sorry, the Taylor series that you should know. What's the first one that you know you should know? Sine of x, cosine of x. The third one was, another one is ln x, ln x. We did that yesterday, but we couldn't do it around zero, right? Why couldn't we do it around zero? Exactly, so here's the thing. What's, how does ln x compare to ln of, uh, what was it, uh, of uh, x plus 1, which is what we just said? How do they compare, the graphs? How do they compare? It just moves to the left 1, right? What was the interval of convergence of this one? No, it was 0 to 2. Remember, It was 0 to 2. This one goes 1 to the left. What does that become? <laughs> Negative 1 to 1. All it does is shift it. All it does is shift it. So another way to do it, too, is this. Do you remember what our answer was yesterday for ln x around, around, around 1? Does anybody remember what it was in the notes? Can you find it? What was it? We had ln x was equal to what? Do you remember what it was? I think it starts with x minus 1 minus x minus 1 squared over what? 2 plus x minus 1 cubed over 3 minus x minus 1 to the fourth over what? Four, like this. Do you remember? That's what we did yesterday. That's what we got. We had to center it around one because we couldn't plug in zero. Here's the thing. What is literally, just when you look at, look at the board here, what's literally the difference between this expression and this expression? Instead of x, what do you write in there? What happens if you plug x plus one in for x into each of these positions? What do you get? You just get what? Yes. Which is exactly what we got right there. Boom. The point is you can do direct substitution. So for example, you know that sine x is equal to a bunch of things added together, right? So what happens instead of x, I wrote 2x or 3x. Or, oh, you can start doing substitution to build Taylor polynomials, which is what we're going to practice, which is what we're going to practice. Okay. Oh, move it. This thing. Have you squared things like that before? Sure. Yeah. What about cubing? We were just doing things like that in my calculus class. Can you do that? Yeah. Sure. Does it get kind of annoying? Yeah. yeah. As this gets higher, does it get really annoying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you get a ton of terms, and then you find the like term. Like, you could do it. Would you want to? No. No. No, not so much. Not so much. So let's say I asked you this. Let's say I asked 1 plus x to the p power. Let's say I wanted to expand that. That's another way of saying equals. It equals something, right? The sum of a whole bunch of stuff, right? A whole bunch. Oh, it's, is it something to do with Pascal's, right? Something, right? So let's call this uh, uh, j of x. What's the first derivative? What's the first derivative? P times x to the. What's j of x? What's the second derivative? P times p minus 1. 1 plus x to the. Let's just do it one more time. The third derivative is p times p minus 1 times p minus 2 times 1 plus x to the? OK, so if we wanted to construct the Taylor polynomial for this, centered around, let's say, 0. We like 0, remember? <laughs> we like 0. Woman, do she one ling, 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 ling. So what is j of 0? No. Plug in 0 for x here. What do you get? 1. 1 to the p is 1. OK, what's j prime of 0? What is it? What is it? Zero. Is it zero? zero? You're plugging in zero for x, right? So what does it come out to be? P. What's j double prime of zero? P times one one. And what's j triple prime of zero? 
Yes. Okay. So are you, look at the board and make sure that makes sense first. Are you okay with that? Yeah. We good? So if we wanted to construct, if we wanted to construct the Taylor polynomial for this, the first term is j of zero, right? And then what do you add to it? J prime of zero over what? One factorial times uh, is it x? I think it's x, right? Plus what's the next one? J double prime zero over x squared plus j triple prime zero over x cubed, right? Oh, do we have all those things? Yeah, we do. What's j of zero? Nope. One. <laughs> B, one, A, B, G, ah! Poof. What's your, what is your favorite color? What is your favorite color? Five. <laughs> wow, we're mixing. Does it, what am I quoting? What is your favorite color? Really? Blue, no, orange, poof. Really? Who gets it? Please tell me. What movie am I referencing? This is on the record. Come on. How, what is the average length speed of the American swallow? Oh, uh, Monty Python on the Yes, OK. There we go. Took two, yeah. two hints, but it got yeah. to it. OK. What's j prime of 0? <laughs> 1 factorial x plus what's j double prime? b minus 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus what? p times p minus 1 times p minus 2 over 3 factorial x cubed, so forth, right? Why is this really, really helpful? We just figured, that's not 1 plus p, it's 1 plus what? x to the p. Why is this a practical thing to have? So for example, I could ask you, what is 1 plus x cubed, right? What's 1 plus x cubed? This theoretically goes on forever, right? Does this go on forever? Absolutely. But eventually you get p minus 3. What's p minus 3? Like, what's the next term? 0. What's the term after that? 0. So it stops. So you can find out exactly what it is. So what is it going to be? It's going to be 1 plus 3x three three X plus 3 times 2 over 2x squared plus 3 times 2 times 1 over 3 factorial x cubed. Did I do that right? I think that's right. They don't all cancel. So what does it become? 1 plus 3x plus 3x what? Squared plus... It's x cubed. Look at that. Is that Pascal? It is. It is Pascal's triangle. But the point is, we just use Taylor polynomials to run binomial expansions. It gets really helpful because I could ask you in a test, I could literally ask you this. I could say, what is 1 plus x to the seventh power? What would you not want to do? Do that out by hand. But it's a, it's a repetitive pattern over and over again. You see the repetitive pattern? A lot of stuff cancels and it simplifies as quickly as you can. So do that for me right now. Based on that right there, do what is 1 plus x to the 7th? Yeah, so you end up with 1, right, plus what? What's the next term? What's the second term? What is it? p is 7 in this case now. It's now 7, everybody. So what is it going to be? 7x, right? plus 7 times 6 over 2x squared plus 7 times 6 times 5 over what? x cubed plus 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 over 4 factorial plus, oh, and I'm missing something, x to the fourth plus 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 over 5 factorial x to the fifth plus what? 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 over what? 6 factorial. And then what's the last term? 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over what? x to the 7th. And should the last term just be x to the 7th? Absolutely. So here's a traditional question they ask you on the AP exam. Do they ask you to multiply all that out? No, they don't. But what they will ask you for is like, what's the coefficient of x cubed? They will ask you questions like that. And you have to do it like once. That's it. But you write it out and then answer the question him. No, you're not gonna, I'm not gonna have you multiply all that out, right? But you now have a, like there it is. You just wrote it out, it takes like 10 seconds. Taylor polynomials just helped us do something that would have taken us out. You might have to go further, that's the thing. If I ask you for the first four non-zero terms, as you might have to go further than the fourth derivative because what have we noticed? What can happen? They could be zero. Some of them could be zeroed out, right? So theoretically you might have to go further than this. 
go to the third? Yeah, you just, so if there's only four terms, you only need to go to the, I think, the third derivative on this one, right? Yeah. Yeah, you only need the third derivative, first four numbers. But you might have to go further. You might have to go further. Yes. Yes, if n is equal to 4. Yeah. Uh, Yay! So is that a lot faster? Is e to the x. Do you remember what e to the x expands to? What is it? 1 plus what? X plus x. Hold on, let's do one at a time. Tomas, go. 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial. Yeah, it's the nice straightforward one, right? Yeah. x cubed over what? Like that, right? Do you agree with that? Everybody's with me so far. Okay, so let's substitute in i theta into there. So let's do e to the i theta. If we do that, what does it turn into? 1 plus what? i theta plus what? i theta squared. Do it in pieces. Be careful. i theta what? Over 3 factorial plus, let's go one more. i theta to the fourth over... Do you agree with that? Yeah. Let's simplify this. Help me out here. Be very careful. E to the i theta is going to be to 1 plus i theta, right? What? Minus theta squared over 2 factorial, right? Is that correct? What's i cubed? So you know i, i squared is negative 1. So i cubed is negative i. And what's i to the fourth? 1. So what's this going to be? Minus what? I theta cubed over 3 factorial plus what? Theta to the what? Over 4 factorial. Do you agree with this so far? Yes. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So my question now is, so we just did e to the i theta. We did the first one. Yay. What is sine of theta? Tell me what it's going to be. I'm just putting in theta for x. What is sine of theta? Theta, yep. 3 factorial, yes, over minus theta to the 7th over 7 factorial. Do you agree with that? If I have two things that are equal, can I multiply both sides by the same thing and result in a, a, a true statement? If A equals A, can I multiply both sides by B as long as it will still be true? So could I put an I over here? If I put an I in front of that, what do I have to do to all the other terms on the other side? What do I have to do? I goes there, goes there, goes there, and goes there. Do you agree? Is that true? <coughs> yes. What is cosine of theta? Do you remember cosine of x? What's cosine of x? Do you remember? What does it start with? This is important. Do you remember what it is? It starts with 1. So it's 1 minus what? Well, in this way, it's theta squared over 2 factorial. Yep. Over what? Plus or minus, right? Do you agree with this? Yeah. Are you okay with that? Let's take these two things and add them together. Let's take them and add them together. What do you get if you add them together? So look, you have one. Oh look, the one is right there. Agreed? Then you get this. Where's that? Right there. Oh, and then you get minus that. Oh, where's that? That's right there. And then you get minus that. Where's that? Right there. And then you get what? Oh wait, so what did we just prove? We just proved that e to the i theta, what does that equal to? Cosine theta plus, do you agree with what we just proved? Do you agree with that? You get one series and another series, you add them together, and guess what you get? You got e to the i theta right there. Do you agree with that? Let's use one specific theta value, pi. So what does e to the i pi equal to? Cosine of pi plus i sine of pi. What sine of pi? This right here is what? Zero. What's cosine of pi? So you just got e to the pi, e to the i pi is equal to what? Negative one is equal to, sorry. Co what's cosine of pi? It's not one, it's negative one, kids. So what does e to the pi i plus one equal? Boom, that's what's on the board of the Math Resource Center. You did it. You did it. You did it. I just jumped away from it. You did it right there. You reached the math resource center. So look, what did we do? There's e to the x. You plug in i theta and you get oh, look. Well, what do you end up with? All of these pieces are just the merging of those two things. They're just the merging of the two. 
If you add this to this, if you add all of these terms together, what do you get? You get this, you get all those terms. And then what, oh, so if this is true, plug in pi for theta goes to zero, oh, look at that. That's where it comes from. You were not able to prove that e to the pi i plus one is equal to zero.